Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 91 of Be With Me in the Book of Acts. We're going to start with Copernicus. There's this thing called the Copernican Revolution, which is um, a theory based on uh, Copernicus's work uh, that was back in the late 1400s of planetary revolution. That is what revolves around what? And Copernicus was the first sort of modern guy to come up with the idea that the world, the universe, the stars, the planets, that they don't revolve around Earth. In other words, Earth being the center of the universe. He said that planets revolve around the sun. So it's a theory go going from geocentric, center, the Earth is the center, to heliocentric, that the sun is centered. So this was such a radical uh, piece of thought that it was called a revolution. In fact, Goethe said, of all discoveries, none may have exerted a greater effect on the human spirit than the doctrine of Copernicus. In it, the world was asked to waive the tremendous privilege of being at the center of the universe. I love that part. The world was asked to waive the tremendous privilege of being at the center of the universe. So it's this revolution of thought, a paradigm shift that is so crazy that if we uh, parallel it in the spiritual world, it can cause some radical actions. And that's what happens in our story today. Now, they didn't kill Copernicus for this because it was a theory. But Galileo, about 110 years later, who had better telescopes and actually saw planets doing what Copernicus um, predicted, they wanted to kill him and he was old and so they gave him life imprisonment and he died about after nine years of confinement. So they wanted to kill Galileo for the Copernican uh, revolution. And at the end of today's story, they're going to kill Paul. They're going to kill St. Paul. Listen to this. All right. So just context is they go to an, uh, Lystra, a new town. They heal a guy and the people see that and they say, this is amazing. And they want to worship Paul and Barnabas. They hear about it. They're speaking in a different language, so they don't really get it, uh, get the uptake until they bring the cows ready to sacrifice them. And then uh, this is from Acts chapter 14, verse 14, 14, 14. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their garments and rushed out into the crowd saying, men, why are you doing these things? We are also men of like nature with you, and we bring you good news that you should turn from these vain things uh, that's, that is worship of Zeus and Hermes, to a living God who made the heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them. Then he explains about God here a little bit. So listen in. Yet he did not leave himself without a witness, for he did good by giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. And even with these words, they scarcely restrained the people from offering sacrifice to them. So this is verse 18, and they are ready to, to keep worshiping Paul and Barnabas. But then here's today's single verse. This is verse 19. But Jews came from Antioch and Iconium. So they come from 100 miles away to influence their thought. But Jews come from Antioch and Iconium. And having persuaded the crowds, and we'll talk about what they persuaded them, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. So as far as they knew, they killed Paul. Now, why would you go from one verse wanting to worship him, and the next verse, after having what the implications are explained to you, why would you want to kill him? All right, so let me just go through that. First of all, he says, come worship the living God. That sounds like good news. Well, the implication of that, when you think about it, is, that means the gods you're worshiping, they're dead. You've been barking up the wrong tree, and you've been worshiping vain gods. That's offensive. Number two, the creator. If, if there's a creator of the universe, I have to sort of get off my throne that I'm not the center of the universe, that there's a creator of who I am beholden to at least some of his rules, 
Um, and I'm not, I may not be king of the world. And that's ultimately offensive. All right, number three. He says that for a long time, he allowed the nations to walk in their own ways. Well, who doesn't want free will? Of course, I want to be right in my own eyes. Uh, Frank Sinatra sang the song, you know, I did it my way. But if there's a, if there's a God, a specific God, then, then I'm accountable to his judgment. If there's a God big enough to give me free will, then there's a God big enough to exert some judgment at the end of it. And I have a responsibility, and he has a responsibility to judge. Don't we all want a, a, a God of justice? Number four, rather than worship the God that I want, Zeus today, Hermes the next day, Paul one day, Barnabas the next day, what difference does it make? No, there's one God. And if you're wrong, it's offensive. All right. Next, witness. He says that the God has given you plenty of witness, rain and season and growth and the satisfaction of your hearts. So if you've ever gone to bed saying, wow, I had a good day, I was a very productive day, or however you judge a day, God invented that feeling. Next, so this whole earth-centric, me-centric world, my God, my world, my ways, my worship, Paul uh, and these Jews who come and explain it to him, he flips it on the ear, saying, no, no, God is the center, and what you've done in, is in vain, and you're accountable for it, and there's judgment for it, and that would make you want to kill the messenger. And that's, I think, after the Jews explained what I just explained to you, that you have to get off the throne and waive this tremendous privilege of being at the center of the universe. And the people say, no, I don't want to do that. And so they stone Paul and suppose that he is dead. So as far as they know, they kill Paul. So here's the, here's the conclusion, is this is a revolution that every single person has to face when they come to the Lord. You may, when you hear about this, you say, golly, this gospel is offensive. I want to kill the messenger. I want to kill Jesus. I want to kill Paul. I want to silence the messenger. Or we do waive the tremendous privilege of being at the center of the universe. And we yield and we believe and we give up the privilege to God. That is what I pray for you today. I pray that there would be a Copernican spiritual revolution in your heart. Thank you for listening.